We're joined again by Ken Curtis, chairman at Starfort Investment Holdings. Our uh, key commodity, the one that got us in all this trouble when OPEC came out in November 2014 and said they weren't going to cut and we wanted to free fall, and now all this drama surrounding on it. But obviously a lot, a lot riding on it for us. Huge amount riding on it. Uh, you know, oil prices doubled since the bottom last February. Two or three times come back up to that $50 level for Branton. What does that do to the Canadian economy? I mean, I can't imagine anyone who would love to see more than Alberta, but even up in Ottawa, for the price of oil to jump up to 60 bucks and call, solve some of their problems. I see a midterm, we'll see much higher oil prices because the demand supply balance is moving in favor now of producers. Investment's been chopped back so dramatically. So I see 2018 will be 70, 75 dollar oil again. But I think we've got a hump here to get over uh, right now and between now and the end of the year and early next year. Obviously, oil and its price very important to the price action on the TSX Composite Index here in Canada. In the States, though, we've seen a very nice, if not somewhat surprising, rally off of the back of Trump taking the White House when people didn't expect him to. Uh, all this idea that his is, uh, policies are inflationary and it's going to be pro-growth. Did the market get ahead of itself, considering that he doesn't even take the White House or the oath until January 20th? And then we've got to bring these policies into practice. Well, the Trump rally's actually been focused on three or four sectors, right? The whole market's only up 4% since the election and it sold off 2.5% uh, running into the election. The Trump policies are to dope the economy, drive it up to growth to 3.5-4% short term and mid term. Long term there's real issues with that but if he puts in place infrastructure investment, uh, very low tax on corporations, a one-time small tax on capital repatriation, chops back on a lot of regulation in the, in, in the energy sector and elsewhere, I think the U.S. economy will get up to 3 3 3.5%. And that's going to be great for Canada because we have so much invested in the U.S. economy. And the catalyst that finally might start moving uh, yields on bonds up to a level, at least in, off of historical lows, people weren't seeing that coming at all. Think of all the conversations I've had over the past couple of years with different investment fund managers and strategists saying, we can't see any reason for bond yields to start moving higher. And suddenly we got one out of the blue. Well, this Trump, changes the picture too. But Trump almost bailed the Fed out of the corner they were in. Yeah, higher growth, but this higher interest rates in the context of higher growth, I think also leads to a stronger U.S. dollar. And that will drain inflation off the economy. So broadly, I think we've got a pretty good outlook if actually these policies are implemented over the next two, three years. Longer term, the implications for the budget, the implications for international trade, given some of that uh, pretty hot rhetoric we've heard, they are open questions that we have to keep our eye very closely focused on. With all these open questions, is it still feasible that at some point we ever get back to what we could call normal interest rates? Do we ever see that day again? Yeah, I think we will. You know, after big bubbles pop and crash like we had in the U.S., we had one in Japan, it takes a decade to get people to get back to where we were, and we're working our way through that. Now, you mentioned trade as a part of uh, what Donald Trump was talking about. Obviously, a lot of rhetoric around NAFTA that he's going to tear it up if he doesn't get what he wants. But the fact that he said in the first 100 days, they're out of TPP. It's not going to happen. We keep talking about the fact that Canada needs to be involved in trade with not only the United States, our biggest partner, more than 70 percent, but other parts of the world. But we keep trying to get a part of these trade deals, including TPP. Now, it seems that the Americans, maybe on their own, are going to kill this one. What are our prospects for selling our goods to people who aren't Americans? First of all, we, we don't have a choice. We have to have great relations and great trade relations with America because they take such a huge portion of our exports. And number two, then we have to start focusing on these big, high-growth markets, China, India. Japan isn't a high growth market, but it's a big market where we could do a lot more. It was interesting when the Chinese Premier was in Ottawa and Montreal a few weeks ago, it was announced that we would start some dialogue of an eventual trade agreement with China. I think that's great because over the last 10 years we haven't had a really clear policy with regard to China and we need to get into those markets. I mean, think of it, the Chinese economy is going to be bigger than the U.S. economy within a decade. Remember, back in the 1990s and mid-90s, it was smaller than the Canadian GDP. That's incredible. And we've got to get to be part of that. And so I think engaging China, and the Prime Minister's done that, and I think we're sort of on the right course, but it takes time and a lot of effort. A lot of effort and time, and it seems to be a bit tricky, too, because right now the fear is that there's too much foreign money, namely out of China, moving into real estate in certain cities. We want to uh, keep housing affordable for people, but we still want foreign investment in other parts of our economy. If you think there's too much speculative investment in uh, the real estate sector coming from people outside the country, there's easy ways to settle that. 
put a 15% tax on foreign investment. That seems in to have estate. done the trick in Vancouver. Uh, that's done the trick in London. It's done the trick in Singapore. And maybe we have to do that elsewhere in the country. Well, it's a pleasure having this conversation with you as always. Ken Curtis has been our guest, the chairman of Starfort Investment Holdings.